Combination is just like permutation. You're counting the number of ways to pick from a set without repetition of elements. The difference is that for combination, order does not matter. And what, what does that mean? I'm going to talk about that in details later in this lecture. For right now, you need to know that slot method can only be used when order matters. So you cannot use slots for combination problems. So here you're going to be using formula for combination. And here's the formula, which looks pretty much just like the permutation one with the addition of R factorial here in the denominator. Again, N and R means the same thing. N is the number of things you're choose, choosing from, and R is the number of things you're choosing. So here, yes, yeah, since slots cannot be used, this formula is your only tool in solving combination problems. Let's dive right into an example. You order mother's bear's pizza with a friend late at night. There's a special on three toppings pizza, so you, you can decide to go with that. There are eight toppings to choose from. How many pizzas can you possibly be made? Here we're going to simply apply the formula. So n equals 8. 8 toppings to cho choose from. And r equals 3. 3 toppings being chosen to put on the pizza. So here we have 3, 8, c, h choose 3. Put the 8 and the 3 in for n and r. And once you solve that, it's going to come out to 56. So, uh, as I've mentioned, permutation is when order matters, and combination is when order doesn't matter. Another way to really think about it, the way I find this the most helpful, is to distinguish where the, the slots are distinguishable between each other. If they are, then order matters with the permutation. In other words, if you rearrange the same elements, it becomes a different set. And let me give you an example here. Let's say we have a three-digit number from the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a permutation because digit 1 and digit 2 are distinguishable. And they're distinguishable. You can see if you switch them, it becomes a different number. So, say 1, 2, 3 is a different number than 2, 1, 3. So here distinguishable means that digit 1 and digit 2 are two different things that can be distinguished from each other. Now let's, let's look at another example that slots are indistinguishable, where the order doesn't matter with a combination. In other words, if you rearrange the same elements, it's still the same thing. Let's look back at the three toppings from the 10 on the pizza. You can't distinguish between topping one and topping two, after you put all the topping on the pizza, toppings just toppings. You can't say which topping is which topping, or which topping is being done first. So pepperoni, sausage, and ham is the same pizza as ham, pepperoni, and sausage. So here this exactly means order doesn't matter, and the slots are indistinguishable. One good way to identify between permutation and combination is to go ahead and draw the label, draw and label the slots, and then see if the slots are distinguishable. And then also you can try if switching two elements from two slots can affect the outcome. Remember, neither permutation or combination can have repetitions. If there are repetitions, you cannot use either of these two methods, and you have to use something else. So here we're going to have a problem that's called choosing from multiple pools. 
There are four Democrats and three Republicans forming a committee with two Democrats and two Republicans. How many different committees can be formed? Here we actually have two, two different pools to choose from, a Democrat pool and a Republican pool. What we have to do here, we're going to have to treat Democrats and Republicans separately. First, you, you can see this is a combination problem because the order of the Democrats chosen doesn't matter and the order of the Republicans chosen doesn't matter. Here we have C4 choose shoe, 2 for Democrats and then C3 choose 2 for Republicans. We're going to multiply the two to get the answer. So again, here, two Democrat out of the four. Two Republican out of the three, and we multiply them to get the answer. Another situation where we're going to have a problem called multi scenario problem. Here's an example a group of six friends are thinking about a spring break trip to Florida. At least four of them have to go in order to get the group discount flight. So, how many groups can be formed? such that they can't get the discount. Here first is to identify the kind of probability problem, which I've said here is a combination problem. Again, you can think about this combination because this six friends, the, the, the order of the friends chosen is not, it's not, doesn't matter. So for this problem, here you can see the word at least, at least four of them have to go, meaning the qualifying events are when four or five or six of them can go. So basically, you're just looking at three scenarios, four people going, five people going, and six people going. They all satisfy the condition of at least four of them. Here we have to treat each scenario separately. We're going to have 6 choose 4 if 4 of them go, 6 choose 5 if 5 go, and 6 choose 6 if 6 go. This time we're going to add them. Again here you can see group of 4, 6 choose 4, a group of 5, 6 choose 5, a group of 6, 6 choose 6. We add them all and we get 22 here. And here is the golden rule of finite. And you multiply or you add. Say it once with me. And you multiply or you add. Let's look at the two previous examples where we needed two Democrats and two Republican. We multiplied them. Four choose two times three choose two. When we needed a group of four or five or six, we add it. So we have group of 6 choose 4 plus 6 choose 5 plus 6 choose 6. Here's a problem that combines the ideas of multiple pool and multiple scenarios. Brad and Angie have six children, three boys and three girls. Three of them have to do the dishes tonight. How many ways can the three be selected so that there is at least one boy and at least one girl? Very first thing, I'm going to draw out a table representing the spectrum of events, ranging from all of one pool to all of the other. So here you, you can see one of the extreme is that all of we're choosing three, so the extreme is going to be three girls and no boy. The other extreme is three boys and no girls. And then here in between, we're going to add one. And then here we subtract one as we go from the left to the right. And here I've used checks to represent qualifying events and crosses to represent non-qualifying events. So to qualify for this problem, Again, we are looking at at least one boy and at least one girl. Well, if you have zero boy, that's not at least one boy. So that does not qualify. 
and when you have zero girl and three boys, that is not at least one girl, so that does not qualify. So they have crosses, and here the middle two, they both have at least one girl and at least one boy. So these are the qualifying ones, and I've given them a check. Two boy, one girl, and two girl, one boy are the qualifying events. Here, we're going to add up the number of elements in those events. Since we have either two boy, one girl, or two girl and one boy, and again, the golden rule, and you multiply or you add. And here you can see that we need two boy and one girl in this scenario. So here with the and, we're actually going to multiply these two. So here's two boys, three choose two, with three boys to choose from. And here, one girl with three girls to choose from, so three choose one, and we multiply. So here, this is in itself a multiple pool problem. And then here's another multiple pool problem in itself, where we're doing two, two girl and one boy. So again, with three boy, we choose one. We choose one. This sees we choose one. This one boy and two girls, so we multiply. Here is the three girl choose two girls. And again, we have two boy one girl or one boy two girls, so we add them. Comes out to nine plus nine, which equals to eighteen. Sometimes there are more checks than crosses. In that case, it will be quicker to take advantage of this equation here. The number of elements qualify is equal to the total number of elements in the sample space minus the number of elements not qualify. So let's say that in English again. This means that all the things that can, all the things that works for the problem is going to be everything that can happen minus the things that doesn't work. And here let's look at this example. And that's and this is going to be the last example set up, but instead of at least one boy, one girl, we need only at least one boy. So here these three are checked and this one is crossed. So here we have three checks and one cross. And we can do it like the last problem, we could have added these three checks, but there's a quicker way using this formula. Here it's going to be easier if we take the total number of elements and then subtract the number of non-qualifying elements from it. Total number of elements is the sample space, which is, we have six total, three girls and three boys. If we choose three. So here's six choose three representing the sample space. Any three. And then we subtract the one that works, that doesn't work. So again, the, the one that doesn't work is here, zero girl and three, zero boy and three girls. So we just take that, subtract it out. So oh, three choose three and uh, three choose zero representing the three girls and zero boys. And once we subtract it, we get 19. So again, here we take the, we're taking the total. So the total is basically the sum of these four, everything put together. And we subtracted the one that didn't work. We subtracted the cross, which is the cross. So if you take this, all everything here, take this one away, it's really the same thing as adding these three. So in effect, that's what we did here. But this is much simpler than having to add up three things.